23-7 victory over Woodrow Wilson. We're here at Darling Stadium. The game starting early tonight in respect to the possibility for some severe weather, which we hope will hold off and allow us to get this... <laughs> Well, good enough. To, it's great to have you here, but what a, a funny night we're having. We might, might get a storm, we got a lot of wind and everything. But what I want to talk to you, first of all, Coach Austin, you got an awful young team. Well, yeah, I mean, we're, you know, we're trying not to use that as an excuse or a reason for not playing well, but we do, you know, we're dressing like 21 freshmen and sophomores, and they're, a lot of them are playing a key role for us. And, you know, you get out there and do the best you can with what you got. Right. Okay. And also, a, a kind of a unique situation. You got two quarterbacks you use. Well, yeah, and and pr primarily they're both juniors. Um, one played a little bit last year. The other one was the JV quarterback, and actually the other one played a little bit on the JV as well. And they're so equal. You know, one does some things good, and the other one does other things good. So we try to use their talents together until one of them really steps out to the forefront and. Uh, separates himself from the other. Okay, one that really wants it, and you, you can tell by leadership and a lot yeah. of other things. Uh, you know, I'm looking at your team, and I've seen this young, but I also, you know, talking to you and the coaches, they're real positive because these kids are learning and they're getting better every week. Right, and, and they're doing a real good job. I mean, considering you, you got a lot of these kids who were JV players last year's eighth and ninth graders, and now all of a sudden they're thrown into a whole different situation, you know, where there's a lot more pressure. And, you know, we, we coach them, we coach all the kids together anyway, so they're used to our coaching style but they're not used to you know a larger game plan you know more complicated situations seeing more things on the field the pace of practice is a little bit different when we go to team uh, where you know it was a little slower with JVs but you know they've, they've come along really well we're real proud of them well you know and that's the only thing you can ask for is sure. the kids to get better every week I know your, your program has really taken off you have done a great job over to kick well, thank you I mean the three years you've been there you've really turned the program around and a lot of people are real high on it but you know you win they want you to do it every year oh, Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, I think the expectations, you know, our expectations are high, but, you know, we try to also keep it realistic, you know, one game at a time. You know, our goal every year is we want to go out and compete every week. We want to play hard. We want to compete with whoever we play with. And, you know, and if we play well and get beat by a better team, you know, we're going to go home and, you know, try to get better the next week. But, you know, what concerns me is that we don't come out and play poorly you know, against somebody we're evenly matched with. You know, I don't know. I, I, you know, I'm not sure how we match up this week. You know, I think that, you know, they've kind of, you know, been been ahead of us a little bit, and and you know, then Phoebus and Hampton are who we're trying to catch up to, and right. and I mean, everybody else is trying to catch up to them too. And if we can compete with them on a year in and year out basis, I feel like we've gotten there. Well, and and that's what you want to do. What do you look for from Phoebus tonight? Well, I mean, you know, just like usual, they're going to run the ball, and at least we feel like they're going to run the ball. You know, with uh, Elon Lewis, I mean, you got the best tailback in the Peninsula District. You're going to give him the football. You got a horse, you're going to ride him, and and we expect to see a lot of him. Last year, their fullback did a lot of damage to us, so. You know, we're, we're concerned about that, too. They ran a lot of trap option on us last year. And, uh, you know, we know that they're going to, you know, their game plan is drive the ball down our throats. And and if I had that horse, I would ex have exactly the same game plan, <laughs> without a doubt. I hear that. So, well, listen, good luck to you tonight. Thank you. Appreciate it very much. And I uh, just want to let everybody know that we are the uh, the poor imitation of the Blues Brothers. <laughs> neither one of us can say. Neither one of us can say. Neither one of us can say. All right, well, let's go back up to Tim. Now they take on the very talented Phoebus Phantoms. And, of course, Bill D has uh, a loaded team again. As you mentioned, you heard Tommy Austin talk about uh, Elan Lewis is uh, the premier running back young man. Has Well, first of all, Coach, uh, first game that we get to see you, I know you already have one game underneath your belt, did a good job going over against Wilson, but there's always 
room for improvement. And Stevens uh, Friday didn't to play your first game, did he? No, he was out with a, an injury. So you know, we're happy to have Steven back this week. Uh, you know, we'll need him against a good team, good kick and tan team. Uh, like to be at full strength. Some of the other guys were back. Steph- Stephon Moss was a little banged up. He played some of the game and. Uh, and B.J. Brown's a little banged up, uh, you know, so the off week helped. You know, I, I think they're going to, you know, be able to play hopefully most of the game there, but, we'll, you know, we'll see. Okay, and also you got a quarterback that's a little different, Denathian Robinson. Right. Now, you told me he's a great athlete, a little a bit like B.J., right. uh, or D.J., I'm sorry, and uh, good athlete, but he's not really a quarterback, but he does a good job. Well, he's a quarterback in the sense he, right now, he, he, you know, he's a, he's a, he's a good leader, very right. good leader. Uh, you know, and he just tries to do things well that he can. He runs the option pretty well. He handles the he handles the huddle well, and the kids respect him. So you know, right now, you know, we're, we're just going to do the things and try to do the things that he's good at. Okay, now let me talk about your horse, Elon Lewis. First of all, going to Tech takes pressure off him from the recruiting angle. Uh, nice kid, uh, very uh, dedicated. He, from what I understand, works out all the time and is kind of a leader by example. Right, right. Elon. Well, Elon's been here. You know, he he even played a lot his freshman year. You know, he was behind an all-state tailback of McWright, and you know, and uh, he's just a strong, durable kid. And uh, you know, we're hoping for a big game from him tonight. What do you expect from Kickatan tonight, Coach? Well, they're they're always well coached. Uh, they always play good defense. Uh, I think Tommy's a lot like me. He wants to run the ball. I mean, uh, and you know, they've had a little time to prepare, two weeks, so I'm sure they're going to have a few wrinkles in. And, uh, you know, I, we always expect a tough game. It's always a one, especially when the kids know each other. Yeah, oh, yeah. Well, listen, good luck to you tonight, Coach. Okay, thank you. All right, let's stay tuned for tonight's starting lineups. And we're back here at Darling Stadium as the Phoebus Phantoms have come on the field. And the Kikatan Warriors uh, on the far sideline, the visitors for tonight's game. Tonight's game is brought to you by Zooms with 14 convenient locations to serve you. And it's brought to you also in part by Parklawn Wood Funeral Home. There we go, where Nancy Staten is your funeral director. All right, and we are back up here. I, I want to uh, correct something that I mentioned. Uh, I said that these teams played last week. They actually played two weeks ago as they had a bye week last week, uh, but they did have, in fact, 1-0 victory, so we got that part right, Bob. Okay. Uh, but, uh, yes, they did have a week, and I think uh, Bill D. from Phoebus actually said he was not a great proponent of bye weeks, but in this case he really appreciated it because he had some players that were pretty well nicked up. Well, and they got bumped up not just only in the game but in the practices, and, and they were playing, and, and, you know, none of them hurt bad enough not to play, but they had to, uh, you know, you, 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 you want them to be full strength when you play a game, and, of course, when you start the Peninsula District, and this is such a tough district anyway, each game is very, very important, so Bill wanted to make sure his kids were ready, and they were. We are having a moment of silence. I, I, you and I were talking. I did not hear what it's about. But Thank you very much, football fans. I think it was Ronnie Hendricks. Oh. Ronnie Hendricks. 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 Ronnie and in our thoughts and prayers go out to his family. Uh, th- what we're going to see tonight, Tim, between these two games, first of all, uh, Phoebus is going to take the ball and they're going to run at you. And I told Bill, I said, you know, everybody's going to put, you know, they're going to put eight men on line of scrimmage. He says, we're going to see it all year. Are we going to be able to listen in to the I think so. Pre-game? Let's see if our uh, mic is working on uh, head coach, uh, rather referee, Gary Robbie. 48. Kick it in, won the coin toss. They are deferring. Phoebus, Phoebus will receive. Guys, you put your back to this goal line, and you guys put your back to that goal line. Come on down here, Phoebus. I'm going to tell the folks. The Phoebus will receive to begin the second half. Okay, guys, shake hands. Let's have. First Did he say jitters. second half? Yeah, first game jitters for all of us. <laughs> uh, not, not all of us working on 100% here. First half, Phoebus uh, will receive. Now, part of that reasoning uh, will be the wind. Although, you know, I look down the field, Bob, 
The flags to the uh, right of us are blowing from right to left. But the flags from our left are blowing right. They're swirling yeah, wind right now. Yeah, it's a swirling now, so wind. And, and I'm not so sure that wind will be a definite factor for either. Well, the only time it's going to be if it's blowing in your face and you have to punt the right. ball or you're trying to kick an extra point or field goal, then it'll make a big difference. The sun is shining. It's beautiful out here. You would think there was not a problem, but we look at the sky and we know that any time it can change. Uh, but this is going to be a good contest any time these two teams get together. If we have the officials to show you, or better yet, we're going to show you the Phoebus uh, offensive lineup to start the game. Sylvester Hicks, senior. Robert Oates, junior. Maurice Hampton, sophomore. Thomas Johnson, senior. Andre Holloway, junior. Matt Wright, junior. Brent Vincent, junior. Reggie Noah, senior. B.J. Brown, senior. Eden Lewis, senior. To Nathan Robinson, junior. And there you have the offensive starters for the Phoebus Phantoms. I'm not sure whether it's my ear set, but yeah, I'm... We're picking up a lot sounding, of feedback. We're sound... Well, you don't, but mine's better now. It sounds yeah, like I'm talking into a barrel. Well, I, well... <laughs> <laughs> Careful you're, now. You're standing next to killing, are you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, I couldn't let that go on. I did not I see could, it. Right, must kick myself Back here. to the game. Nicholas Alejandro has the ball on the tee, and this game is underway. Good-looking kick into the end zone, and that will be an automatic touchback with Lewis fielding the ball. In high school, you cannot return a, a punt or rather kick off from the end zone. Here are the Kikatan Warriors Chris on defense. Nathan Robinson, senior. Jack Wampler, junior. Asa Cooper, senior. Chad Hooker, junior. Deron Mayo, junior. Mike Gaddis, senior. Terrence Dorsey, junior. Dakota Mathis, sophomore. Keith McBride, junior. Bryant Draper, junior. And here we go with first play from right, Skimmer. From the 20 yard line. This is Robinson over center. And as you might expect, Lewis gets the initial handoff. He has some running room. He is in the open with one man to beat. Can he be caught from behind? Oh, no. Nice job. He made a little cutback to, to help have a blocker help him. Is that an 80-yarder? And from the line of scrimmage, <laughs> first play, Elon Lewis. I don't know if we had. First play for a touchdown. That was a good a shot of uh, Mayor Carney. But what they did is looked like they went to an unbalanced line, Tim, and then right over there had them outnumbered on that side of the line. First play of the game. <laughs> so the extra point try will be coming up. Mr. Schwartz. And a mishandling of the snap. Schwartz now will have to try for the extra point, and he will be no good as a, a, a kind of a bad snap. The holder couldn't handle it, and uh, Chris Schwartz trying to go for two in uh, incomplete pass, so it remains six to nothing with... Uh, all right, let's show you the kick of tan warriors. Josh Smith, sophomore. Jonathan Ash, junior. Chris Falcon, junior. Aaron Macias, sophomore. Chris Leofow, freshman. Nathan Robertson, senior. Randall Pugh, senior. Dakota Mathis, sophomore. Asa Cooper, senior. Deron Mayo, junior. Keith McBride, junior. And there you can see the uh, starters on Kickatan offense. We'll give you the defense for Phoebus after this kickoff. Tonight's contest, we will pick a player of the game from both of these teams, and each player will receive a shirt. The shirt comes from Tidewater Team Sports. You want stop sports headquarters for screen printing, embroidering, uniform, and apparel. Call 594-0411. Talk to Dave Chubb or Terry McNamara. And we do appreciate uh, Tidewater Team Sports and their efforts to help us pick a player of the game. All right, we are set for the second kickoff of the game. This one is going to be taken at the 15-yard line. And out across the 25 to about the 27-yard line was Shepard, Isaiah Shepard. Yeah, 21 Whaley and 25 Walker combined to make that stop, but they just kind of pinched him. 
Here and comes the, the defense for the Phantoms. Defensive lineup for the Phoebus Phantoms. B.J. Brown, senior. Tyreek Brickhouse, senior. Steve Friday, senior. Kobe Walker, junior. Matt Wright, junior. Keith Barnes, junior. Donovan Anderson, senior. Devontae Lindsay, senior. Jonathan Robinson, junior. Reggie Noah, senior. Stephon Moss, senior. So a senior-laden defensive squad for Bill D. And getting the initial handoff is Deron Mayo. And he may have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. And he is the brother of uh, Gerard Mayo. Remember the uh, young man that was such a uh, star on this Kickatan Warrior team last year? I'm sorry, I was not looking at the yard marker correctly. Lost five yards on the play. So it'll be second down and about 15 for the Warriors. A very hot, humid, sunny afternoon. The Warriors are looking directly into the sun. Yeah. Bob, you know what that was like having been down on the sideline Ooh. a little earlier. <laughs> you notice one time I had my sunglasses on. And but it is. And, you know, even with the wind in your face, kick, it, it, Peeba said, we want the sun at our back. <laughs> right. You stop and think of it. That's basically what they did. No gain. In fact, perhaps another yard loss as the Phoebus defense is allowing nothing in the beginning of this ball game. Just underway from Darling Stadium. It's six to nothing, Phoebus. If you clicked uh, the TV on, expecting to, you know, see some defensive action first, Elan Lewis took the very first play, 80 yards, to make it six to nothing. Third down and long. Third down and about 17. Inside handoff, and it uh, momentarily surprised the Phoebus Phantoms, but not enough to get substantial yardage, and it'll be fourth down and a long 11 and a punting situation for was the that, Was that 25 carrying the ball, Isaiah Shepard? Is I that who it was? was? Yes. Yeah, he's just a freshman, Tim, 5'8", 140. Not a big kid, but a freshman. And uh, Coach Austin told me they're going to run, you know, maybe seven backs you know, maybe four tailbacks and three fullbacks tonight. We will give you the names of the officials when we get a chance. We were uh, trying to get you the lineups for the teams in earlier and didn't get to that. Nice kick. Line drive, and it bounces past the uh, return man. And that was Denathian Robinson, and it goes out of bounds at the Phoebus 31-yard line. That's where the Phantoms will have it for their second possession. And that was a real smart move on Denathian, Tim. Just let that ball, instead of trying to grab it, let it go ahead and go out of bounds. Uh, don't try anything silly. Here are the officials, 44-yard punt, and the officials for tonight's game. Referee is Gary Roby. Bill Allen is your umpire. Linesman is Alan Denton. Tom Chisman is a line judge. The side judge is John Patrick. And the field judge is Calvin Hill. Yeah, Calvin's moonlighting. Uh, I was going to say, isn't he a basketball <laughs> official? <laughs> he right. used to run the ball for the Cowboys, if you remember. I, I do remember that name. And this is Lewis again. And Lewis is again into the open. He's finally tripped up, but not until he picks up about 17 yards. So Lewis has 97 yards on his first two carries. Yeah, watch this. Nice cut right here. Getting some great blocking as well. He was, he was hoping that uh, we're going to have a timeout looks like from the Warriors yeah uh, Tommy Austin does something like he doesn't like what he's looking at up there and he's trying to figure out what's going on Tim uh, Zooms is going to give an award to the senior player on each of the football teams this year in Hampton who has demonstrated academic excellence these players be awarded plaques at a school board meeting after the season we'd like to thank David Allen and Zooms for their continued support of WHCS and our student athletes and our schedule this year. Tim, you want to talk a little bit about our schedule? Sure, with 9.19 to go in the first period. Uh, this game, of course, will be followed by Heritage here against Kickatan on the 24th of September. Bethel and Hampton, October the 1st. October the 8th, we'll have Hampton and Kickatan. 15th of October, Denby will visit the Hampton Crabbers. On the 22nd of October, Hampton Phoebus, always a battle. 29th will be Kickatan and Bethel. And then we'll have a game on the 5th of November between the Warwick Raiders and Phoebus, and then we'll wrap up the season Friday the 12th of November as Bethel will entertain these same Phoebus Phantoms. 
Hey, right. uh, two carries, 97 yards is not too bad, is it? Good average. <laughs> Man in motion is Matt right now. He sets up left side. And again, Lewis, middle of the line. This time the Warrior defense is waiting for him. And he might have gotten a yard and a half. But that will be all. And that's the first time. And again, this is what Tommy Austin will do as a good coach. He says, all right, guys, I got I to gotta burn a timeout. But we have to adjust our defense to play this properly. Or we'll be behind so far so quickly it won't matter. And and what's also what's hurting Tommy right now is these guys are learning as they play. He He's got six seniors. Three of them had never played ball before. And, uh, you know, you, they have to learn schemes and all. And it's really tough if you haven't have played. Second down and eight. Lewis again as the workhorse gets the ball. And the Warriors say the ball came loose and was recovered by them. As of yet, no official indication. And apparently that is not the case as uh, referee Roby has uh, made no indication that there was a change of possession. But you do see the ball come out. Now, Lewis may have recovered it, and apparently he did. But the great job on the replay there, guys, as you can see as we back it up, yeah. you will see that ball coming out just right as there. Lewis is going to the ground. So there was a fumble, but apparently recovered by the Phantoms. Third down in a yard, and Lewis usually good for more than that. Struggles to get to the first down marker, and where they mark the ball will determine if he got it or not. I'd, this going to be close. Out from this angle, it does not appear as though he got it, and that is the official ruling on the field. He's going to be about a half a yard yeah. short. He almost had to get to the, uh, was that the 43? 42, actually. He needs to get to the 42, so he's a, a good yard short. If you look across the yeah, far side. Yeah, 42. Yeah, he's a good yard short. So another timeout. This one taken by Bill D. and the Phoebus Phantoms as he will discuss their uh, options in this case. With their just, uh, you know, incredible rushing attack, you'd think they could get a yard, but they've taken two turns to come up with just a little more than a yard. So uh, that still remains to be seen, I guess. Well, what, you, you've gone in there and you said, okay, defensive line, this is where you need to be. We need to get you in the gap, so we need to put you here. But whatever they're doing now has, has messed up the blocking scheme of the Phantoms because they are plugging up the hole that the Elon is looking for. And you got and you can take your hat off to Coach Austin. You burn a timeout, but you need to do that sometime early in the game. All right, I look for a quarterback sneak. Tight formation. That looks like that elephant formation we used to talk about. This yeah. is Lewis, and Lewis just following the blocking of the middle of that line has the first down at the 41-yard line. I'm, I'm impressed, Tim. I am impressed. You remember that that was the elephant formation. You got the memory like an elephant. That's right. <laughs> I've been eating a lot of peanuts lately, so maybe that's what it was. I don't know, but that was good. That is right. And it's just a power. We're going to get behind our big lineman, and you, you guys just move forward, and we'll go right behind you. So now we have an official's stoppage of play for the moving of the chains, I guess. Not really certain, although... Uh, oh, they got an equipment problem over here in the Kickatan huddle. I see the one of the officials over there. Okay. So, again, the weather continues to hold off here. We hope that continues to be the case. Threatening weather in the area, tornado warnings, and uh, heavy rains uh, in the vicinity. But so far, the clouds seem to be holding off, and we'll hope that it does. Well, we got a little rain earlier today. I got wet on a golf course, but uh, it quit, and the sun came out. This is Lewis, and Lewis is stopped after he gets to about the 37-yard line, a pickup of about four. So it's been Lewis, 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 and, who else? and Lewis. And Lewis. Here's the replay. Is that Lewis? Uh, that's Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> Not exactly very uh, innovative. <laughs> oh, well, it's and why like, And why would you? <laughs> yeah, like Austin said, if, we, if I had him, we'd ride him too. Yep. All right, now... A different handoff. Yeah. This time it goes to uh, the DJ fullback. Brown. And and this is another thing that uh, Tommy said during an interview, if you remember. He said our, the fullback hurt them last year with a couple of trap plays. And that right there is uh, Brown from that fullback position almost picked up the first down. And he's about a half a yard short. 
So it brings up a third down. You see the score in your upper right-hand corner. First quarter, six minutes and 10 seconds remaining. And it's third down and less than a yard to go for the Phantoms. Their second possession. And it's a quarterback keeper, and he does not get the first down. No, he stood straight up. Instead of putting his head down and going, he stood up. You can't do that. Denathian Robinson, the junior quarterback. Watch this replay. You're going to see this. It, it was just not there, and the Warriors responded very quickly. So now the Phantoms, no reason to think they won't go at this juncture as they went on fourth and one last time, although this time they don't use that tight formation. They spread out the receivers, and they just give it to B.J. Brown, a big fullback who barrels his way to about the 37-yard line and another first down. Well, don't you know that the fullback, I mean, the linebackers are really looking to, you know, kind of keying on Lewis? Sure. And, and you, you have to. Be. He's run the ball every time except three now. But uh, no, that's the whole uh, effectiveness of him is because you can use him as a decoy when he's not tearing you up as the primary running back. So here you see the shot from the sideline camera, rough, close and personal. Ron, uh, that's not Ron Baton, is it? Is that yeah, the, Ron Baton and yeah. Mike Nowinski. This is Lewis, left side. He picks up yardage to about the 22 yard line. So that will be a gain of about seven. They spotted at the 21 yard line. Here's the pitch. Yeah, Stan. Yeah, Mr. Baton had a uh, neck operation, so he's got a titanium plate and six screws and makes all the, the sirens go off when he walks through a metal detector. I can imagine he does. Well, we're certainly glad to have him back. Yeah, sure. He, and he says uh, he's got a lighter camera. <laughs> <laughs> he says, oh, I really appreciate that. That's Lewis carrying for the first down as the Phantoms just continue to grind it out. They, of course, were given the opportunity for first possession because of the wind factor. But, of course, if you're not passing the ball, the wind is not really a big factor. Right, and they took the other end, Tim. And, again, I think it was because of the sun in your eyes. Yeah. The sun was in your eyes. We're going to see a, uh, an opportunity to see a – and we got to stop it to play here, so you'll get a real good chance, Scotty, to show us what you're speaking of. See if you pick up a face mask that wasn't called right, right there. there. Oh, oh my. my. That's a. And how could you not see that? That's one of your full fledged, <laughs> full fledged face masks. Now we have a penalty flag, which is, to my recollection, Bob, the first one of the ball game. Yeah, it's it is. Played almost uh, eight minutes. Tinker Tan is applauding, so I'd assume that it's against encroachment. Encroachment. Lewis, so far here in the first period, has had a career first period, 127 yards on nine carries. We have a dead ball, encroachment on the offense. Five-yard penalty, replay first. So you heard referee Gary Roby tell you? He said replay first. They never played it first. There you go. It's still first down. Double wide outs with a I formation with Brown blocking for Lewis. Brown gets the call. And right up the middle, picks up about the yardage that was lost on the penalty. And we've got a phantom slow to get up. That's B.J. Brown, the ball carrier. Oh, check that. Yeah. Is it Brown? Yeah, I think so. <coughs> it's 34. Yeah, yeah, that's Brown. And he is, as you see on your oh, he's, picture. He doesn't have one shoe on. Yeah, but he's not. Walking very gingerly off the field. Well, he probably twisted his ankle stealing his shoe. I don't know. <laughs> He's limping on the sideline. I will uh, I tell you that's not just a loss of a shoe that's affecting him. So we got Stefan Moss in there now. And a double reverse. And the ball comes loose. The Warriors have it. And they officially. They just stripped that ball. That young man that had that was carrying, I didn't catch his number. That was Brent Vinson. And now they are still di discussing whether or not ha has not been officially ruled a recovery. Here's, as you see from the sideline, and then up on the top side. They're still discussing whether there was a change of possession here or not. Let's see if the ball went out of bounds. They have a holding on the offense. That penalty is declined. 
first down. Okay, okay. So the discussion was the fact that a penalty occurred on the play. And there you see Mr. Roby, the referee uh, from the sideline shot. So there is a change of possession, and the ball came loose uh, after the second and third efforts of Brent Vincent. And again, you see that so often, you can't fault a player for the extra efforts. But whenever you're doing that, you're so prone to coming loose with the ball. So the Warriors will have it for their second opportunity. Trailing six to nothing and dodging a bullet here that might have put them back 12 to nothing. Ball is loose the ball. on the ground. Who got it? They say Kikatan retains possession. But again, it looks like some of the second game jitters still coming out here as Terrence Dorsey is the quarterback. Now he changed quarterbacks and he'll do that. And that's got to be tough on the center because each quarterback is a little different underneath the center. And uh, we didn't talk about the field tonight. Isn't that in great shape? Oh, that's amazing. I thought we were, I thought they'd put AstroTurf in between last year. And, and look at the goalposts. They painted them. Yeah. Second down and 10 after the bad exchange from center. And net and nowhere to go. That is Shepard, Isaiah Shepard, who is thrown for a three-yard loss. That was number 11, <laughs> Matt Wright. He may have stood him up, stood him up. Matt's got a lot of uh, experience. And he's just a junior, so he'll be back next year. He played a lot last year as a sophomore. 145 remaining in the first period. There you see the score. Phoebus on top as a result of an 80-yard run by Eli Lewis on the first play from scrimmage. Third down and 13 for the Warriors. Man in motion coming to the near side. That's Mathis. And carrying the ball is Shepard and getting back close to the original line of scrimmage. But again, that'll be well short of a first down and it'll bring on the kicking team. He will have the wind at his back. Got a good kick away, a 44 yard of the last time he punted. That was Stephen Friday. Making that tackle, Tim, and the young man who did not play in their first game against uh, Woodrow Wilson. So, Philip, hey, you can hear the wind. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, you could hear it when you were doing your interviews. The wind is still whipping around uh, the stadium here. Uh, the kick, Alejandro kicked it away from the return man. And now picking the ball up is Nathanian Robinson. Nathan has the good return down to the Kikatan 44-yard line. Well, he picked up some good uh, blocks from, um, from that uh, return team. Here's the replay. They mark it at the 43. It looked like he was going to just let it roll because he slipped as you saw there. And then he right got, here, look at that. Got a nice he really block. took care of about three guys. Yeah, that was Reggie Norwood who gave him that uh, block and allowed him to return the ball. But we've got a flag down. And the officials are talking with the Warriors. It looks like a mark off against Phoebus. And if the penalty was thrown at the 50. And it's a big, it's a 10 yard. Back, back Phoebus. First and 10. So from the spot of the foul, they mark it back. So instead of great field position at the Kikatan 40, the Phantoms have it at their own 40 yard line. Under a minute now, 35 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Kikatan trailing six to nothing. And this is Lewis. And Lewis bowls his way to about the 44 yard line. That'll be a gain of about four. We're happy to have our corporate sponsors back again this year. Zooms with 14 convenient Peninsula locations, at least 14. They may have added some more since we were here last. And I can't of course, keep up with them. Park Lawn Wood Funeral Home. Appreciate our corporate sponsors. If you have an interest in being a corporate sponsor of our sports coverage, give the uh, Channel 46 call over there to Scotty Bowers. He'll be glad to hook you up. This is Lewis. Cutting it inside, has the first down as he crosses midfield to about the 48-yard line. You know, college coaches are looking for that, where he's coming around like that, and he finds his blockers, and he cuts off the blockers. That's a great read that time by Elon Lewis. Watch this Set replay. right here. Cut as back. Time ran out. 
<laughs> that is the end of the first quarter. It is. That was a quick quarter. And the clouds are rolling in. The, the sky is looking rather ominous. And hopefully we keep our fingers crossed and uh, don't have a rain event before this was over. Crowd still filing in here at Darling Stadium. Well, you know, a lot of people didn't know that the game time was changed from 7 o'clock to 6 o'clock. And, uh, you know, they put it out on the radio and the TV and, and, and tried to get the word out. But, you know, you, not everybody listens to, the, you know, they go home, get something to eat. We're going to go to the ball game. And, uh, but anyway, what a, a, a nice night, really. I mean, as far as we haven't had any rain yet. I hope we get this thing through before we get the rain. Well, like I said, if our if our camera, one of the cameras were to pan to our left, they will. They, you're talking about that sky. Yeah, that, that not so friendly looking sky. There, that's the one I'm talking about. Well, I was talking to Bill D about his offensive line, and he says the yeah. left side of his offensive line is weak because it's all new. The ones on the right side have been there. Of course, he lost a great center last year, and uh, that'll hurt you on either side. You saw Old Glory there, and it's blowing rather vigorously. Uh -oh. This is Lewis into the open. They will not catch him. Elan Lewis will score 48 yards. Well, he's got close to 200, doesn't he? <laughs> Pretty close. So he starts the second quarter like he began the, the first, first quarter. Well, yeah. Watch this. Right up the middle. A good blocking on that left side. I just talked about it being weak, but it didn't look weak that time. Well, when you have his speed, if you get a little bit of room. All you need is a crease. Yep. You're just not going to catch it. Now the Phantom, having missed the first extra point try, will apparently try for two. Bad snap on the initial extra point try. Now Bill D uh, throws he is his hot. hat down in disgust because now we he's going to have to burn out. a timeout time because of apparently some miscommunication on the two-point conversion attempt. Bill, being the perfectionist that he is, is not going to be happy about having to use a timeout here before the second quarter just barely gets underway. Oh, you know, I'm talking about this, this weather. Tomorrow morning we're supposed to play in a... Uh, a golf tournament over the Woodlands. The uh, Phoebus Lions Club is having a golf tournament. Jack McDonald, uh, Eddie Johnson, uh, Doug Leiker, and myself are scheduled to play, but I think we may hear when rain is that down tomorrow? tomorrow morning, uh, yeah. 7.30 start. You never know. How are you guys at water polo? Yeah, we could do that. <clears throat> Might be your best option. <laughs> Well, you know, it's tough when you put the ball and it goes in the hole and the fish knocks it out. <laughs> That's right. All right, the uh, teams are returning to the field, and we'll see the two-point conversion attempt by the Phantoms. They lead 12 to nothing. Lewis took 12 seconds to get the first score and nine seconds of the second quarter to get the second score. So let's see if the Phantoms can convert on this. Robinson on a play action fake has a man wide open and converts the two on a toss to Stefan Moss. A toss to Moss. Stefan was here last year. Nobody picked him up. Nobody picked him up. Come right out of the backfield. He was wide open. Talk a little bit about a crew or cameras tonight. Nathaniel Braxton, Susan Bowers, Ron Baton, and Mike Nowinski. Graphics and animation. Veterans. And animation. Veterans, all of them. <laughs> Andy Foley, by the way, who is going to the uh, Eagles well, Viking no. game. He's going to he's going to seven games this year. Well, he's not going to the Viking game because he, he showed me the tickets and I still have them. I, he, oh, you took them. <laughs> he says, look what I got. I says, no, look what I got. Uh, Slow-mo is Andre Maddenly. Camera control, Sarah Myers. Production assistant, Susan Higgs. Audio and Chief Engineer Don Sharaus and Director Producer Big Guy Scotty Beam Me Up Bowers. You know what's scary, Bob? This is we. This is year number 24. And, and you know who's only one year older than us? I was going to say someone on the crew is younger. How about how about <laughs> e, How about ESPN? Their 25th year. They're yeah. only one year older than there we are. Go. Well, I'm uh, and, and Chris Berman and what's that guy Lee? We've been around almost as long as they have. Lee Iacocca. <laughs> oh, a, 
does. Booming kick again yeah. with a little help from the wind. And cool. again, cannot return it. High school rules. You cannot return a punt that goes into the end zone, even if you want to. Uh, or kickoff. Or kickoff. So, we have just played nine seconds of the second quarter, and it's 14 to nothing in favor of the Phantoms. Tim Cole and Bob Hintz coming to you for the 24th year. 24 years. Yep. And we haven't aged a bit, have we? Not a bit. <laughs> and the Warriors trying to get something going here. And running the ball was number six, Darren Mayo. Yeah, in 24 years, lost a lot of hair and one wife. <laughs> uh, that was Lindsay, number nine, and... Uh, was the one of the initial tackler on that play for the Phantoms. Uh, that was one of the, the most positive uh, offensive plays that the Warriors have run tonight. They, they're minus yardage. Picked up a little more than a yard on that one. Keith McBride is at quarterback now for Tommy Austin. They do interchange the quarterbacks and one of the Warriors left a little and, and, he, and he's trying to hide so, I oh understand my goodness. So what did I do? I they, knew I was they quick. They said two and I <laughs> went on one. Went on one. No, we don't want to we don't want to tell him who that was. I will not Five tell. yard penalty still second down. Interesting thing now in college ball they identify the, the number yeah, of the. Yeah, that's uh, new, new this year. Yeah. Don't mention by name, but they, you can do the number, but no name. Well, we're not going to do either one. That's exactly right. There you're right. Just keep showing it till the poor boy <laughs> crawls in a hole. <laughs> so back him up five. So they had a, a gain on the first play, but that loses five. And this one will go nowhere as uh, the inside handoff to Mike Gaddis is read extremely well by that very quick Phoebus defense. But well, Mike Gaddis will play as number 51 in the, as a fullback, and he also will wear sometimes number 44. Didn't there used to be a rule against the band playing during the time when the, the game was being run? <laughs> Didn't we have a big to-do about that once? <laughs> one, one year, if in fact our very first year, we could hear each other. Another timeout. And Tommy Austin is just as animated on the far sideline as you can see the, the King of Tan Huddle as Bill D was on the near sideline. These guys are both, I guess you could use the word intense. I think that would intense be Intense would be, uh, yeah, good description. But you know what? That's why they're successful. They, yes. they're, they're fair. They're, uh, they're tough. They're intense. Well, and, and they want the kids to get better. And you're going to get better if you know what mistakes you make. And, and then you, you, okay, the pointed out to you that I'm not going to do it again because, I first of all, I don't want the coach to act like that or me again. <laughs> well, they get your attention. Yes, they do. I remember when we was uh, talking about Coach Dennis Kozlowski, he would climb in the face mask oh, yeah. of one of his, his ball players in a heartbeat. Unofficially now, in the first half, Kigatan eight rushes minus two yards. On the other side of that coin, Lewis, 12 carries, 187 yards. Oh, and here's some that. positive yardage. And a good-looking run. First down, isn't it? Yeah. It will be a first down. And ball carrier was Keith McBride, who is the other quarterback. Watch this replay from the ground level. And it, looked, it was almost too high a snap. It was yeah. uh, from a uh, shotgun formation. Black quarterback draw. So McBride takes it out to the 33-yard line where the Warriors have their initial first down of the ball game. Timeout. And we got an official's timeout now for equipment, I guess. Oh, they they got to get the, the marker on the... All right, looks like they're down marker out. over there. They have to get the little flag on the... <clears throat> first one. game here, yeah. Darling, for us, so getting all the kinks out. That kinks in the chain. And now we got a flag that comes out. 9.54 remaining in the first half. And it looks like the Warriors will be called for the infraction. Encroachment. 
Yeah, and what, what an offensive line. We have a dead ball, encroachment on the offense, still playing first down. What they'll do sometimes, they'll get up there and they'll get in their down position and then they'll raise their hand up. Well, you can't do that once you put your hand down. You can do it, but they're going <laughs> to yeah, call a okay. penalty. Again, out of the shotgun, McBride. And this is a direct snap to the tailback, and that is Shepard, and he struggles to pick up a couple of yards out to the 30. It's Devon Moss who caught that touchdown pass, hit him so hard he knocked his own helmet off. Watch this. Watch Moss coming up right here. Boom, and it goes his helmet. Yeah. And a Kickatan Warrior shaken up on the play as well. Well, Moss plays the safety, and he came up and made that stop. We're almost at the line of scrimmage. I believe it was Mayo that was shaken up, number six, and he has come out of the ball game. So the clouds continue to gather around Darling Stadium. Watch this replay where the helmet comes flying. Stood him straight up. Yep. Just glad his head wasn't still in there. Second down and 13 to go. Well, this is like a single wing, Tim. Yep. Inside handoff. This is Corey Thomas with running room to the left side, and he is bulldogged down at the 38-yard line. I the bounds there. Last time I saw a single wing run, it was running at East Carolina, the last major college team to run a single wing, and <laughs> they're picking up some positive um, things. Somebody on the south, uh, Norview, I think it was, used to run a single win for years and years and years. And it always messed up teams that played them because they were so unfamiliar with yeah, it. And it's the only time you see it. Exactly. And you can't get your practice squad to do it because they don't know what the, you're talking about. Yep. Third down and a long five for the Warriors. Trying to keep this drive going. And direct snap right to the quarterback out of the eye, and he will apparently get the first down. Depending on the mark, looks like he got out about to the 44, which would give them the first down. Yeah. So it is a first down, and this is Keith McBride. Andre Mattingly got that slow motion going tonight. Got him by the jersey, but he just dragged the defender until he got the first down. Just shy of the 45-yard line. As we approach the 8.35 mark in the first half. Phoebus 14, Kikatan nothing. This game videotaped on the, what day is Bob? 17th of September. 17th of September. 2004. Direct snap again out of that I formation. Picking the positive yards. So uh, a new wrinkle, if you will. I don't know that this is a normal formation that uh, was anticipated by the Phantom defense. Well, I asked Tommy Austin how young his offensive line was. He says, I start one freshman, two sophomores, and two juniors. Inside handoff, and the defense was not faked out on this play as making the grab was Colby Walker to stop the play for a loss. And what he also did not only stop the play, but he grabbed the arms of the when he when he wrapped him up so he could not pitch the ball. Because it looked like it was going to be an option play. So a loss of about a half a yard on the play. It brings up third down and a long 10. Well, both of these teams like to keep the ball until they score. You keep the other team on defense, it's hard for them to score off of defense. McBride to the 49-yard line. So it'll bring up a fourth down for the Warriors. They need to get to the 45-yard line, so it's a good five yards and a little bit more. Now, they can't take a chance to give the ball to fan, the Phantoms uh, at the mid, midfield. But they're going to punt the ball, but they're going to be punting into the wind this time. 
And Denethian Robinson back deep, Timmy. Notice he's not as far back as he was before. We might have a good chance of seeing how the wind could affect this putt. Alejandro gets a good looking putt away. And it's mishandled at the 25 yard line and it apparently will be recovered by the Phantom. So well, Robinson, that's scary. <laughs> well, you know, the, the wind, as we you and I yep. already talked about, it's swirling. So, I mean, that ball, it just it, a little it, knuckleball it, out it, of it. Yeah, it kind of died on him. Yeah. Thinking he's, okay, I got it, but then it, it just kind of yeah. comes back away from him. It's tough for the receiving team on those kind of things because the ball, you know, you, you think it's coming to you, and all of a sudden the wind just holds the ball literally still for him. So the Phantoms will start from their 29-yard line, leading 14 to nothing. We have 6-12, make that 6-13 remaining in the first half. And Lewis, surprise, surprise, gets the call. <laughs> and see, you know, Kickatan is going to be like a lot of teams. They're going to play have eight, nine guys up their line of scrimmage. The only problem with that is he pops through them. I mean, you, you, you only have two defensive backs, and they're <laughs> wide. Well, we've already seen what has happened on two occasions when they stacked the line, and uh, once Lewis got some daylight, he was gone. Wide out to the near side and to the top of your screen as well. So they split the receivers. They give the ball inside. And this time the ball carrier is Stefan Moss. Well, that was a good run, and it was a kind of a deceptive play. Kickatan didn't know who had the ball. So Moss gets the first down at the 43-yard line. Here's your replay. Well, they just had good blocking in there. Yeah. You know? They just turned around the defenders, and they, they couldn't find the ball because they were so well covered. And Asa Cooper, one of the tacklers that time. Lewis for a couple. And you can hear the wind in our microphones as it continues to be very windy. But we've, we've yet to have a pass, if memory serves me correctly. Did we have anyone pass yet? Yeah, the, the, the two-point conversion. I mean, other than that. No, 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 that was it, just the two-point conversion. That's the only time the ball's been in the air except when they've punted and kicked off. Under five minutes remaining now in the first half. Double whiteouts to the right side. I formation with Lewis in the backfield as the tailback. Swing pass near side and off the hands of the intended receiver, and that's probably why they don't pass it much. Devonta Lindsay was the intended receiver. So that stops the clock with 434 remaining. Watch this real quick. Just, just a quick look. But see that ball. We've got the time nose. out. Time out. That's got to be their last time out. But if you notice when he threw the ball, I don't know if he had the point down like that, but the ball just dipped and there was no. And the wind's going to blow it if you, unless you put a zip on it. It's like a golf shot. If you hit it straight and, and with a lot of power and low, the wind won't affect it. You put it up in the air. Uh, by the way, I meant to check with the with the guys in the truck to see who had the pool to see the first time you mentioned the word golf. <laughs> I didn't hear anything this time. Uh, I think I think I caught them off guard and they didn't. <laughs> oh yeah. Here we go. Andre. Oh, yeah. Here we go. <laughs> Nobody winning doing such a good job on the instant replay. That's right. <laughs> yep. I, I just wondered if you guys picked that up earlier, but that's right. They were talking about getting wet on the golf course. And, boy, it's starting to look like we might get wet on the football field. Yes, it does. I got my on. umbrella up here. Of course, if the wind's blowing, I might be flying. You want that? Oh, that makes it cooler. And that light on, I started to confess. Fake to Lewis. Robinson being chased, throws, completes the pass. And enough for a first down. That's Matt Oh, White. wait a second. He stepped out of oh, bounds the, the, before the... You're right. Well, if he's marking it... Yeah, he is. He's marking it two yards short. It looked like he got the first down. It must have stepped on the sideline. And the wind continues to whip around in our booth here. Well, somebody could turn on the other lights if we wanted them, but I'm fine. 
Stadium lights are on. This game did start earlier than originally scheduled. So it's fourth down and a long yard and uh, stoppage of play for an equipment issue again. Matt Wright having his helmet checked. Big 6'3", 215 pound junior is Matt Wright. So fourth and a yard just across midfield and the Phantoms will go for it. Robinson will give it to Lewis and Lewis has the first down and then some. Boy, he went through that line of scrimmage fast, didn't he? And you know, it looked like he, he if he had just got veered away from the tackler a little bit, he could have been gone all the way. Watch yeah. this, because there was only one man between him and Pater. It looked a little, a little less like that on the replay, but uh, with his quickness, it closed down very quickly. Lewis, so far now in the first half, 15 carries, and he has hit the 200-yard mark. <coughs> and an official stoppage of play again. I'm not sure. We're trying to see if there's an equipment issue. I guess not. All right. Just a conversation, a brief conversation on the sidelines with the someone on the sideline. Don't know who it was. Four minutes to go in the half. This is Lewis cutting to the outside, looking for a block, and is knocked down by Terrence Dorsey, but not until he picks up right at 10 yards. And Lewis, a little slow to get up as he was pancaked. Yeah. Uh, he was looking for the block. He didn't yeah. get the block that he was looking for right now. Right here, he's looking for the block. And uh, slipped a little bit, yeah, too. Yeah, he was, he was trying to cut. The block was... Uh, he was trying to cut to the opposite way from where the block was, and he, you're right, his feet just slipped out. But, uh, you know, this, this field is in excellent condition out there. Too many crickets. So they're going to measure for the first down as it's close enough. And um, a little, I didn't get a chance to see where they started from, so I can't guess on this one. I'm going to say he's just missed it. It looked like he might have been a little short from where they had it first set. Oh, uh, you hadn't lost your touch. Sometimes you haven't lost your touch. Sometimes you just don't lose everything. <laughs> <laughs> lost my hair. Part of my hearing. <laughs> Losing your eyesight, but have not lost my touch. <laughs> so second down and inches to go. There you see the scoreboard. 14 to nothing in favor of the Phantoms. Phoebus last year, 10 and 3. Quick hitter up the middle. Fullback. That, who is that? Uh, uh, Brown. That Brown. B.J. Brown to the 30. Pick up of about four. And that will move the chains. So a fresh set of downs. Phoebus has one timeout remaining. Kikitan has used all of theirs here in the first half. Fumble on the exchange, and I believe the Phantoms will keep it. Robinson fell on that ball as soon as the mishandling of the ball occurred. He was quick to... And, you know, he may have just stepped out quick. Yep. He was backing up before he got the ball, and that, that, that happens sometimes because he's backing up. The center's going forward. The ball ends up nowhere. Yeah, right, you know, whoops. So no play. Or Here no comes the rain. No gain on the play. And, yep. As long as we uh, hopefully avoid any of the lightning, Lewis is stopped at the 26-yard line. And Lewis, again, has not gotten up, but apparently will do so as the umbrellas open up. Pretty quickly. This looks like one of those uh, tropical showers that they yeah. were talking about. We have time out. Time out. So the Phantoms will burn their final time out with 2.32 remaining to the intermission. Don't forget that. Do we do our plugs for our, commercial, our sponsors, Buzz? Oh, Zooms, yeah. Zoom. Bean hey, Town Zoom. Coffee. They got the, yeah, the Bean Town Coffee. They got fried chicken. They got your favorite pizza. Yes, and they do. And you do love those potato wedges. I do, I do. And, of course, you always get your donuts like a box in one, right? That's right. 13 of them. 13 Krispy of them. Kreme, that's what they got. No, they got great stuff there. Oh, you get your mine. gas? Sitco gas? You bet. 
Right on the way home. And you get gas, right? <laughs> Not only, but also. <laughs> well, I guess we were hoping the rain would hold off. Our, our greatest hope is that we don't see any lightning. That will uh, cause some serious issues. Yeah, if we do have lightning, then they'll wait 30 minutes. If there's no lightning in 30 minutes, they'll come back out. Uh, well, we'll just have to we'll yeah, worry we'll about just that wait and out. see. Uh, there hasn't been much lightning with this storm, but now you've done it. Downfield, wide open at the 10-yard line. Completed pass for a first and goal. Who was that who got that ball? That, looks that like... was the young man who fumbled it earlier. That's yeah. Brent Vinson. Yeah. And that was a nice-looking pass. It really Robinson. was. There was another man that was short that was open also, but he went to the man that was further down the field of wide open. So that gives them a first and goal at the Kikatan nine-yard line. Double wides to the near side. Then, uh, check that 32 rather than that 12. That is Corey Hayes over here. And the inside handoff goes to Lewis. And Lewis picks up a couple of yards. Two minutes exactly remaining in the first half. No two-minute warning, of course, in high school football. You have 12-minute quarters, if you're not totally familiar with that. And you'll watch the replay with Elan Lewis. Already scored two touchdowns. Looking for number three. As we mentioned in the pregame show, Elan Lewis verbally committing to Virginia Tech. Yeah, and I think, you know, that takes a lot of pressure off him during the season. He can concentrate on, on playing football and doing it, getting his classes. And On the option, the pitch to Lewis, and he is going to walk into the end zone. You just can't stop them for long. No. If Lewis, you're gonna if you're gonna tighten up and pack them inside, we're gonna go outside. Lewis from seven yards out. The fake. Nice fake, a nice pitch. Yep. yep. So Lewis makes it 20 to nothing with 120 to go in the half. And now Schwartz will try to make it 21. Good snap, good hole this time. The kick is long enough, and it is through the uprights. So the Phantoms score. Lewis with his third touchdown of the ball game. His first one went for 80 yards. The second one for 48, and this one for seven. So he's progressively getting shorter in his <laughs> touchdown runs. <laughs> Well, the kick attempt played a little bit better defense, too. Yep. Uh, it was is one of the reasons, but uh, what a what a first-half display Mr. Lewis is putting on, and you can see why he is one of the premier uh, backs in Virginia. Over 200 yards already, I guess, now in the neighborhood. Let me check it about 220 yards. 223 yards on 19 carries, and we're just... Approaching halftime. So the Phantoms will kick it away. The rain has stopped for a moment. Hopefully we'll hold off for another hour or so. Ball taken on the 10-yard line. Shepard out across the 30 to about the 32. Isaiah Shepard. Gives Kikatan good field position. Neither team has a timeout remaining now. And you watch this return from the 10, a 22 yard return out to the 32 yard line. The coaches over Kikatan are, are, are high on this group. They're young, they're a lot of inexperience, but uh, they say they've got a real good work ethic. Uh, they're coachable, they're quick learners. Uh, you know, and that's what the coaches say. They, and they, they feel like they're getting better every week. They're improving, and that's all you can ask of these young men. Again, out of the shotgun. He's going to keep it, and he is 
hit and hit hard at the 35-yard line. Well, he made a nice spin move on a, a potential tackler, and when he come out of that spin move, he ran right smack into a tackler. Watch this spin move right here. Spin out and boom. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Say, look out. Kikitan last year had a 7-3 and three overall record. But the only people they lost to last year, Tim, were Hampton schools. Yep. In fact, there was not a Newport News school that beat a Hampton school in football last year. 25 seconds remaining in the half. And this is Shepard, whose number is 25. And I tell you, he runs hard. you got to like the young man. He's, yep. he's 5'8", 140, just a freshman. And he's showing some real good uh, ability out there. Good speed, good, good vision. He's making some nice cuts. That might have been the last play of the half. In fact, it is the final play as time has run out here. So we've played 24 minutes here at Darling Stadium, and our score at halftime is Phoebus 21 and Kinkatan nothing. We'll return to Darling Stadium for the third quarter of action after this brief timeout. here at Darling Stadium. Uh, the two teams have returned to the field, but so has the rain, and it has returned with a vengeance. We have some pretty heavy showers coming down right now. So the fans in the stands have opted for the umbrellas and the slickers, and Bob is going to be kind of a damp second half here. Oh, it really will, Tim, and if you look, you can look out there and you can see it. it looks just like it's coming down in cheeks. I know you got the first uh, half statistics, so let's go ahead and get to them. Well, the Kick Ten Warriors, 17 carries, 48 yards. Keith McBride, five of those carries for 27. They did not pass the ball. They had a total of 48 yards, two first downs. They were penalized twice for a total of 10 yards. For the Phantoms, they had 27 rushes for 242 yards. Elan Lewis had 19 of those carries for 223 yards and three touchdowns. They did throw the ball three times. They completed two of those, and that was for 28 yards. Number five, Stefan Moss uh, had a couple of catches. Total of 21 yards. Total yardage for the Phantoms, 270 yards on 14 first downs. They did fumble the ball three times. They lost it once, and they were penalized twice for a total of 20 yards. So our score at halftime, time of possession, by the way, almost equal, Bob, which is kind of an interesting yeah, I, I, I was very surprised when I saw that. But think about it. The two of the three touchdowns from Lewis, one took 10 seconds, the other took nine seconds. They both went, you know, yeah. so there was uh, it was It wasn't a drive of uh, six or seven minutes. No. <clears throat> okay. So for the second half, we will not have uh, our referee, Gary Roby, using the mic. We thought we would rather not have him light up like a Christmas candle. Well, not only that, uh, we didn't want to... <laughs> Put out six hundred dollars to get a new mic, either. Yeah. So that's a combination of two things: him lighting up and us coming up with six hundred bucks. All right, the <laughs> you can see it on your picture. If you can't, take my word for it, it is pouring down rain. But the fans were prepared for this, or they should have been, and we in fact started the game an hour early, 
hoping to get the game in before the weather got bad, but uh, so far, so far we got one half in before it got really bad. Okay, Schwartz has it teed up. And it's a nice long kick, fielded, or actually attempted to be fielded, now back at the five-yard line. This is Shepard, and Shepard gets out to the 15, where he stopped there. And, and he's uh, lucky he got back 10 of those yards. Doug Armstead uh, on the stop. Tim, we will pick a player of the game from each one of these teams tonight. And those player, that player will receive a shirt. The shirt comes from Tidewater Team Sports, the one-stop sports headquarters for screen printing, embroidery, uniforms, and apparel. Call 5940411. Talk to either David Chubb or Terry McNamara. And David Chubb has been doing this, been responsible for us getting shirts for the player of the game since we started doing it. And we truly appreciate it, as I know the uh, the players from the various schools that get these shirts and blacks can appreciate it as well. It looked like some premature motion there, but I don't see a penalty flag. Shepard got the ball and picked up maybe a yard or two. And Stefan Moss making the tackle. Uh, just a little uh, note here on David Chubb. David ended up, had a little bit of health problems and uh, lost 50 pounds. And, wow. uh, but it's, he's on the mend now, and we just want to send our prayers and wishes out to him and his family that he has a uh, full recovery. Oh, good. Thank you. There you can see <laughs> the rain. Hey, that's what that is, huh? That's what that is. Liquid sunshine. But the field in great shape, it so is hopefully super. that won't be a factor. Now we got them close. Flags coming down after the uh, the play. Yep, took care of it. You want to shut this one? No. There you go. And here's the replay, and it's going to get tough out there. It really is. Ball carrier was. And we got Corey a penalty, Thomas. huh? Yep. Kitan uh, apparently guilty of the infraction. We will not be able to hear the call from referee Roby, but we'll be able to see well, it. Well, we just tell him to yell real loud. <laughs> That's a good picture of Mayor Ross Conley. <laughs> he asked me if I had room up here for him, and I did until he got wet, and then we won't let him up here if he gets wet. Holding was the call against the Warriors, so that'll back them up half the distance. Well, that looks like about, what, second and at least 16, 17? Yep, every bit of that. Might even be closer to 18. Warriors struggling on offense, don't need penalties to make it even that much more difficult. Pass incomplete through the hands of Shepard. That's Terrence Dem uh, Dorsey, who is the uh, quarterback now. And you'll watch this replay rolling and getting pressure and just off the fingertips. So that'll bring up a third down and about 16. Actually, they've reset the markers. And uh, Bill D on the sidelines is signaling for a timeout and again you can see well that's one of the rule happy. changes is the the coach can now call the timeout before you know you had to get a player to call the timeout now a coach can do it <laughs> bill is really hot he's doing some coaching <laughs> I think he said, use your head, young man. <laughs> he, he said it like that? That's what he said. Use your head, young man. That's what he said. 10.46 remaining in a third period that has started with pretty tropical slash torrential rain. <laughs> And it's just, it's just it's cheats. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, it's, like, okay, here comes another one. Here this comes is, another one. I assume this is the uh, remnants of Ivan. I think it is. Hopefully, we will be here next week to do a game if Gene doesn't get here to upset that apple cart. And behind Gene is Carl. Carl, yeah. With a K. <laughs> Yeah, 
So we finally got everything set here. Third down and 16. Yeah, but I didn't say nothing. And a fumble, and the Phantoms have it. Oh, man. What's that on about the two yards? Oh, line? yeah. Could not happen in a worse spot. Whoa, my. Yep. Ball came loose. Oh, they ran into each other, Tim. The handoff. And that's going to get even more likely to happen with the slippery ball as yeah. time goes on. Well, the slippery ball didn't have a whole lot to do with that. It's... it's the kids running into each other and <laughs> on the same team. Yeah. So now the Phantoms with a great opportunity to add to their lead. First and goal at the Kikatan two yard line. And Lewis gets the call and he is stopped just short of the goal line. And now they get a touchdown. So after further review, as they say, <laughs> well, I had to see where he was on the bottom of the pile, I guess. So, Elon Lewis with his fourth, as you see it from the ground level, and then back up top. So, we won't be able to see. Eight yard drive, fellas. But the officials rule <laughs> that he did get across the goal line. So Lewis now with an 80, a 48, a 7, and a 2. So with that progression, Bob, what's the next one? One yard, right? Uh, half a yard. And the kick by Schwartz is up, and it is good. So Chris Schwartz makes it 28 to nothing in favor of the Phoebus Phantoms. So in a playing condition where passing is very difficult under the best of circumstances, down by four touchdowns against this tough defense of Phoebus, Tommy Austin's crew has got it cut out for him. I didn't know whether you had an extra set. No, this is the only set I got. Oh, Can we make you a set? No. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about some rules changes. Whenever, when have we ever gone by the rules? Uh, <laughs> I don't know, but Carter Ficklin sends those to me, and I do appreciate that. He's Every a good year. man, Mr. Ficklin. Every year he does. You know, actually, my original roster for King Tan is much better. some running room. That was a nice run back. It looked like he was stopped back at about the 15. Who was that that ran that ball? I believe that was Randall Pugh, number 20, I think. Right here, it looks like he's going to be stopped. Oops. Oh, hey. Uh, it was an opening. Takes up about across the 35. Gigatan needs something positive. And quickly. Yeah. So the score is actually 28 to nothing. Uh, Want to correct that up in your right hand corner? We'll make sure we update that for you. And now the Warriors and Tommy Austin will have less hair than he had when he started the game, have to burn another timeout. So they'll take a break here and we'll tell you that uh, our upcoming schedule uh, if you join us late talking about Three the fact let off, <laughs> really, that uh, we'll be back here at Darling Stadium next Saturday night uh, excuse me Friday night rather when these Kikatan Warriors will host Heritage and then on the 1st of October the Bethel Bruins will play Hampton we'll have that game for you on the 8th of October Kikatan versus Hampton and then on the 15th, Denby versus Hampton. So we have Hampton three consecutive weeks. And then the Phantoms of Phoebus host Hampton on October the 22nd, which is always a head knocker. Yes, it is. Kigatan plays Bethel on the 29th of October right here at Darling Stadium. 5th of November, find the Warwick Raiders visiting these Phoebus Phantoms. And then we'll wrap up the regular season on the 12th of November while Phoebus plays Bethel. 
all games here at Darling Stadium. Fumble in the backfield. Did the Warriors get it back? I believe they did. So the ball that time mishandled probably as a result of the slippery ball. The rain appears to have stopped, at least for the moment. I have a feeling we're going to see intermittent rain. For oh, the rest I think of the so. Game. Second down for the Warriors and 15 to go. They need to get to their 47 yard line. And again, a mix up in the backfield as the ball carrier ran Gattis. into the quarterback. I think it was Gaddis that yep. was the, the ball carrier. Zooms has given a award to the senior football player. And each one of the teams in Hampton this year has demonstrated academic excellence as you watch the replay. These players will be awarded a plaque at a school board meeting after the season. We'd like to thank David Allen and Zooms for their continued support to WHCS and our student athletes. We have a injured player down on the field that looks like them. And I can't make out his number. But uh, apparently is suffering from cramps. It's cooled off with the rain that has come. Yeah, it's, but, uh, but it's, it's humid. very humid and very yeah. sultry. If it's five, that's Stefan Moss, isn't it? Yeah. That's who that would be if it is number five, yes. Yep. Yeah, that's a real pile. <laughs> Look at all those... Uh, Gold helmets. There. <laughs> uh, it looks, it's a cramp. It looks like is exactly what it is. Well, I don't know who Jerry Gentry is. Jerry Gentry used to be the uh, trainer for the football team, and I don't see him down there. But uh, I do want to congratulate him. His wife just had a baby uh, about a week or so ago, and uh, we just want to send our congratulations out to Jerry Gentry, new daddy. Well, he's an old daddy, but he's got a new daddy, too. <laughs> That's, uh, Bob said that. <laughs> so walking off gingerly is Stefan Moss. And again, uh, hopefully just a cramp. Otherwise, they've tried to stretch out his broken leg, <laughs> don't which think, is not always a good I thing. I don't think that's what you're supposed to do. No, right? I don't think so. Third down and long. Third down and about 14 to go for the Warriors. And they got oh, some running room left they side, got... but it did not get the first down. But a nice run by 22, Elvin George, just a sophomore, 5'10", 5'7", rather, 165-pound sophomore. But he is short of the first down by a couple of yards. And that looks like Donovan Anderson, number seven, who made the stop right here. Boom. And he did emphatically make the stop. And if he hadn't. That was first down. He picked up not only first down, he picked up quite a few more yardage. So, fourth and two, just short of midfield. Looks like Tommy Austin's group is going to go for it. And he's back, got the quarterback back under center. And for the rare time tonight, I don't, I don't know if he's going to try and pull him off. No, he's going to run it. And he is going to get stopped at the 40-yard line. That is Terrence Dorsey, who could not turn the corner. And amongst others over there was Doug Armstead, number 80 again. What you got to do is go north and south. You go east and west, yeah. and it's hard to outrun a team that's got some speed. And Phoebus has got some decent speed. That was Colby Walker, number 25, who fought off the block and then made the nice stop. So on downs and in great field position, uh, the Phantoms will take over at the kick of 10, 39-yard line. Fourth down and about a yard and a half, and they lost about five yards on a well-diagnosed effort by the Phantoms. And a fumble on that snap. And the Warriors say they've got it, and, and they, they do. do. So just like that, the Phantoms give it back. And the war last Warrior up. Last Warrior to get up was number 80. That yeah, is right Jack there. See Wampler. coming in right there. Yep. So the Phantoms cannot stand prosperity. They give that's, the ball right back. That's Jack Wampler, defensive end. Mm -hmm. So the attempt at fourth down does not hurt the Warriors. They give it, they get it rather, right back from the Phantoms. At their 39-yard line. Again in the shotgun formation. 
Flag down on the play. The ball is on as well and is recovered by the Phantoms. But let's see who the penalty is against. And it looks like it's against Kegatan. If it is, they're going to decline it. Obviously. Yes. Yep. Offsides or encroachment against the Warriors. And, okay, now we changed it. Not encroachment, but illegal procedure. A penalty nonetheless. So just like that, the Warriors give it right back. The play is rather sloppy here with 7.17 to go in the third period. Rain has stopped for the time, which is a good news for everybody. Hopefully it will just hold off for about an hour. This is Lewis, and Lewis breaks a tackle and is taken down at the 15-yard line, a gain of about 11 yards. Well, he broke but at least two tackles there, Tim, and then somebody got a hold of it, looked like an ankle, and, and brought him down. Watch this run coming right at you. Well, that's what Lewis does. You know, we talked about the fact that he's not a very big uh, individual. You know, he's not he's not six feet or anything like that, but boy, is he fast and he's got great power. And I, I can remember when Bill D told me when he was a sophomore that he was squatting 800 pounds. Yeah, that's that's just amazing. You know, his size has got to be just unbelievable. Gain of about five on that play. Second down and five. Phantoms Need to move the ball to about the four-yard line to move the chains. Demathian Robinson, who's done a nice job of running the attack tonight. Of course, when you have Lewis in the backfield, uh, he'll make you look good. And this is Lewis. And Lewis, looking for his fifth touchdown, is going to be stopped at about the five-yard line. Yeah, bring up a third down and a yard. Lewis, you know, Lewis is going to uh, is committed to Virginia Tech. He's only 5'9 and 210 pounds. So, you know, I, I, you wonder about that kind of size. And he's not, he, he's quick, but he's not the fastest runner. You know, he's not one of these type of people that is necessarily going to uh, run away from a lot of these college guys. Right. But so. I looked in the pros. They got a kid playing for, was it for Denver? Uh -huh. That's a, they say he might be 5'8 or 5'9, but closer to 5'7. And they say he gets behind those big linemen they can't yeah, see him. I can. <laughs> well, I'm, I go way back as you do, because you go back even further than me. Oh, way back. You remember, back, you remember yeah. back in the Houston Oilers, we talked about it before, Charlie oh, Toller. Yeah. He was the human bowling ball. He was uh, he was about 5'4. And he was about and, as wide as he was tall. Yeah, exactly. And they had zero center of gravity, and no one could find him, let alone tackle him. <laughs> First and goal and did not get in. That was Lewis on the carry. So this might be appropriate. He's had him 40. He had 80, <laughs> 48, 7, 2. And now it'll have to be about a one-footer for the progression of these things to <laughs> well, be. Well, yeah, but they're going to call it a regardless. It'll right. be a yard, right? If it happens. It hasn't happened yet. Gigatan would like to have something to say about that. It is second down and goal. Ball just on the one-yard line. In the backfield blocking is B.J. Brown and a tight formation now. And Lewis gets the call, and Lewis has the touchdown. So it's the Inland Lewis show tonight as he has scored his fifth touchdown all on the ground. Here's the replay. Good blocking ahead of him. It's nice to have his talent, but it's also nice to be running behind a very good offensive line. Yeah, and he'll be the first to tell you, somebody's got to block the opponents or I can't get, get any yardage. Schwartz will try to make it 35 to nothing. His kick is up. It's long enough, and it is good. So the Phantoms extend their lead with 440 remaining in the third period. Mike Nowinski with his uh, <laughs> rain garb on, including well, his... that hat makes that's his, <laughs> That reminds me of uh, Indiana Jones. I was thinking the same thing. Uh, <laughs> does he have a whip? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Not that we know of. 
I think Scotty has the whip. He keeps oh, maybe, the guys. Well, I'm not going to tell you. everybody in. You know, <laughs> yeah, Scott, in Scotty's got his whip, huh? That's right. So the Phantoms have blown this one wide open, 35 to nothing, 440 remaining in the third period. And uh, again, you see some of the fans in the stands, a beautiful little child there looking up at, at Dad saying, can we go home? <laughs> <laughs> What's that, Daddy? What, what are we doing here? <laughs> I feel rain. Is it bath night? <laughs> With the wind behind him, Schwartz's kick is taken at the eight-yard line. And Dakota Mathis returns it to about the 20, 21-yard line. 14 yard return. <laughs> Number 30, uh, Dante Boone making a stop. <laughs> so the Warriors, who fumbled inside their own five yard line to set up the most recent Phoebus fumble, need a sustained drive and they need it now. Nothing else. They need to give their defense some rest. And not much working there as the handoff again goes to That's Mike Gaddis, isn't it? Uh, 44. Yeah, Mike Gaddis. The 44-51. You get the right team. Right? I got the right team. Got the right. It's Mike Gaddis. <laughs> Second half of tonight's contest brought to you in part by Parkland Wood Funeral Home. They're located in Hampton Center Parkway, North Armstead Avenue. If you need some information, give them a call at 827-4670, where Nancy Staten is the manager. I'm going to vote for a running clock. How does that sound to you? I buy that. 35 to nothing with rain and threatening skies. We don't have a vote, but that would be my vote. Second down and 11. Running room to the left side. Got, a, got away from a man. Alvin George with another nice run and a first down for the Warriors. He's had a couple of nice runs tonight. Yeah. Stephon Moss is limping again, number five. This is just some good running and some good blocking on the left side of the line there, but you saw him well, evade he, one tackler. Yeah, he did a good job of evading some tacklers. Alvin George. 5'7", 165-pound sophomore, so I'm sure Tommy Austin is happy to see this production. His chains are moved. And we're set to resume play. He did step out of bounds, so the clock won't start until the ball is snapped. They'll try it to the near side. This time, not with the same success. This is Corey Thomas. He is a junior. This young team, as we've yeah, mentioned yeah, before. And, and I told you earlier that he was going to run, uh, you know, maybe four uh, tailbacks and three fullbacks, and they're all young and... And they all get an experience. <laughs> Look at that shot. Now, there's my raincoat. Yep. <laughs> Says, I'm not happy to be here. Not as happy as Mama is. Yep. Second down and about nine. And a good run out close to the 45-yard line. And did a good job in the backfield of going through his uh, fakes, number 12 for the, the Phantom, I mean, for the Warriors, uh, Nick Silvis. That was Asa Cooper. Is he the one who's carrying it? He's a senior, 26. That's the first time I've called his name. So it's third down and about two for the Warriors. Here you see another great shot of one of the young fans. Looks like she might have been into some of the chocolate candy there. Good family atmosphere out here at Darling Stadium. It's a shame the weather hasn't cooperated fully tonight. But if you think about coming out to see some high school football, I suggest you do. Darling Stadium, great place to have a, a family outing. And the ball comes loose. And the Warriors apparently have recovered it. And if that's the case, it'll give them a first down. Yeah, because <laughs> they didn't have the first down. Now they're no. going to, well, they're going to rule he was down. Yeah, I guess I that's think. the rule. 
That would be the ruling. Let's see if we can see what happens. No, that was a fumble. Come on. Yeah. That was a fumble. Well, they ruled him down. So, in doing so, they do not get the first down. But again, Tommy Austin's group will go for it on fourth and a yard. Looks like a fumble to me, Bob. What do you yeah, think? I thought it was a fumble, too. <clears throat> They got it on uh, fourth down a little while ago, so let's see if they have the success this time. Movement in the backfield. Movement definitely in the yeah, backfield. Yeah, they got it. And that'll cost them because they did not get the first down, and obviously the Phantoms will refuse the penalty if, in fact, the play ever got off. Looked to me like it should have been a, a dead ball, dead yeah, play. Yeah, but, but he didn't throw the flag until after no. the ball was snapped. A legal yeah. shift is what they call, which is not the same thing as a lineman raising up. So uh, it's a live play until... Uh, they, you know, they, they stopped the clock. So you can see the indication. It was illegal motion. We saw the young man in the backfield move forward prior to the snap of the ball. So the Phantoms get it back. They had a similar situation a while ago and gave it right back to the Warriors, but uh, Kigatan unable to capitalize. Ball is marked at the Kigatan 45-yard line. I, I got a question for you. How long do you leave Lewis in the ballgame? I think you have to well, always worry about injuries. Yeah, and he's got more than an ample yardage. Uh, you've got some other tailbacks. What are we still in the third quarter? In the waning moments. Yeah, I think this would be the last time he'll be in this, uh, this quarter. That is him carrying the ball. And, you know, I'm not questioning or second guessing anyone I'm just I'm from my perspective there's no upside to leaving him in the ball game at this point unless you want him to get touchdown number six another first down will stop the clock with eight seconds remaining and then they'll restart it and that should be the last play of the third period as Lewis picks up more yardage I'll see if I can figure out there's a good shot of it right there. Just an off-tackle play. So that is going to be the final play of the third period as the clock has been cranked up. And that is the end of three here at Darling Stadium. This game taped on the 17th of September, 2004. After three periods, it's... Phoebus, 35, and Kikatan, nothing. Going to try and give you an updated statistic on, uh, on Mr. Lewis and his production for the night. He had 223 yards at halftime. He now has 28 carries for 265 yards and five touchdowns. Pretty fair. I think pretty good output. Pretty fair game. Yep. <clears throat> you want to check out uh, Channel 46 Sports website, it's uh, WACS46.sportscombine.com. It'll keep you up to date on all high school sports. And, of course, WACS broadcasts live the Hampton School Board meetings the first Wednesday of every month at 730, so tune in and be informed. How many years the uh, Mass Dome been on uh, Channel 46? But uh, they uh, they're on daily. Tuesday, I'm sorry, they're on Tuesdays. And Tuesdays. Suzanne Hicks, the new production assistant, she doesn't look like she's producing anything. Uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays, and that's live at 5 p.m. on p.m. on Channel 46. Pitch to oh. Lewis, and Lewis can't hold on to it. Who got it? They say the Warriors. No, they say the Phantoms. Keep. And 1992, they started in the call at Homework 2000, and when we went to 2000, we changed it to the Mass Zone. So that's been around a little while. Very uh, well received. If you Here's the, the replay. replay. You're going to see the ball never really. Not controlled. a good pitch. Not a good pitch. But Lewis able to gather it in for a five-yard loss. So take away five yards from his total. On the draw play, this is Lewis. And Lewis 
met and stopped at the line of scrimmage. So Bill D choosing to keep his stud running back in there. And, uh, you know, get a twisted angle or something like that, you never know. That big number 79 for Kickatan. Calvin Ruffin, 6'1", 290. It's just a freshman. Woo! Glad I don't have to buy his groceries. He's about the same size as that young man sitting next to you. I don't have any young men sitting next to me. Okay, that old guy <laughs> sitting next to you. 297 if you listen to what he says. Robinson evades the tackler, but then ultimately will lose about five yards. So the Warrior defense certainly has not quit, that's for sure. Well, somebody comes shooting through there on a linebacker on a blitz. Right there, see him. Yeah. Number 10, that's Wampler, I believe. No, number it's 10 Mayo. Is Derek Mayo. 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 Wearing his brother's number. Hold the Mayo. Well, they were trying to hold the Mayo, and they couldn't do it. So that brings up fourth down and 20. And uh, is this the first punt of the game? I'm trying to remember whether the Warriors or whether the Phantoms have punted previously. Oh, yeah. Uh, the yeah. Phantoms haven't, but not, the Warriors not. have, yeah. And now a timeout. They're going to decide whether they're going to punt or whether they're going to run. So fourth and 20, they're uh, going to discuss this. 9.57 remains in the ball game. 35 for Phoebus. And nothing for the Warriors. If you joined us late, you missed the first touchdown because after the kickoff from the 20-yard line, Elan Lewis raced 80 yards. The extra point try was no good. Then after that, Lewis ran 48 yards, and they went for two and completed the two-point conversion, making it 14 to nothing. Then Lewis ran for seven yards. Extra point kick by Swartz was good, making it 21. Lewis then with a two-yard run for making it 28 to nothing. Extra point by Swartz was good. And then the last touchdown, a one-yarder. Yeah, you guessed it, Elon Lewis. His fifth touchdown of the ball game. And Swartz. Do so you think that might put him in the, in the scoring the lead or in the district? I think it just could. And Although, you know, they say this young man from Hampton, this transfer from Nansman River. Yeah. yeah. He's, they, he's going to be something else. So we'll see. This could be a, a, a horse race if you'll pardon the punt. High snap. Vincent's kick. Good high kick. And takes a nice Phoebus roll. And it'll be downed at about the six yard line. So the Phantoms with a good kick. That was a nice kick. Who kicked that? That was Brent Vinson. Yeah. And he is just a sophomore. The young man caught the ball a while ago. So a nice pass. So now in the shadow of their own goalpost with the wind at their back, the Warriors will have it with 9.45 left in the ballgame. Tim Cole, Bob Hintz, along with Bob Killen and Mike Hauser here in the booth, staying nice and dry. And we're happy to say that after that brief shower that started at the beginning of the third period, it has stopped. It and really it hasn't. Has it didn't off. last long. No, just maybe 10 minutes at the most. Not much happening as the handoff into the middle of the line. Well, you can't do anything too fancy and too wild down there. You got your back to your own end zone. You, yep. you, you, you turn it over one other time down there on the two-yard line, and you sure don't want to do it again. Asa Cooper, the ball carrier on that play. Now in the backfield is 22, Alvin George, who has enjoyed some success. And George gets the call and gets to the outside. Almost broke that one. I'd like to have seen that race. That's Stefan Moss and uh, number 15, Keith Barnes, making the stop. Boy, if they hadn't, he was he shows a little bit of speed. He had he? the corner. He's shown me a couple of times when he had some good speed. So, uh, as I said, that would have been interesting to see if he could have broken that tackle. Right here, he just, well, not, you know, the, the angle of pursuit might have been such that he wouldn't have had the, ch the chance, but he's got some good quickness. First down, or th rather third down, and long two for the Warriors. 
Need a first down desperately here oh, and will not get it. Number 25 from the Phantoms. Right, just submarine right underneath there. That's Kobe Walker. Corey, what a great defensive job he did. Cor Corey Thomas was the ball carrier, and he was just, as you said, submarined. And now the Warriors will have to bring on the kicking team. Philip Alejandro will kick from inside his five yard line. Phantoms late getting a man on the field and now they say get back off the field. And now the Warriors also. With they, only, they only had 10 men on the line. Yeah, so Pretty. both teams having some uh, early season, if you will, <coughs> jitters. But Phoebus had, they had 11. They were okay. Kick it that way, and you and when you when you well, for 12. a punch, you, you got you got to have your 11 men in there. Phoebus almost put a 12th man on, and then they brought him out. And one thing you got to be careful by about here, and we have seen it earlier to this evening, is a high snap from center uh, puts them in a real vulnerable position. So are you going to excuse me? Are you going to rush the passer, Tim? Or are you going to go for a return? I mean, rush the kicker? Um, well, not the passer, the kicker. Yeah. I, I think you just put on a return, you know, because if you rough him, then you run the risk of them getting fresh downs, and and they're already deep in their own territory. Now they do have the wind at their back. Yeah, and kick it. I mean, and people <coughs> should end up with with good field position. Yep. And it looks like that's what they're going to do. They're going to put a return on. And very wisely, Robinson decides to let it be downed by the Phantoms, assumed by the Warriors. So Alejandro has not kicked it to the deep man yet. I yeah. mean, he's kicked it right side or left side, yeah. but he's not giving him a chance to run it. So the ball is just on the edge of the midfield stripe to start this one. And uh, I would uh, expect to see a lot of running continuing for the Phantoms. And again, Mr. Lewis is in the lineup. He'll get the call. And he's got the running room. He's got the corner. Can he race? Can he beat the man? Nice move. Yes, he did. Yeah, he got it. He did. He got it. 50-yarder. Spun away from the tackler. Watch this one. Well, that's a 51-yarder because he was crawling the other side of the 50. But watch this move right here. It's, okay, I'm not going out of bounds. <laughs> Three hundred and eleven yards now, and six touchdowns for Mr. Lewis. Gee, yeah, let's see. Player of the game. I wonder who we will Player get. Player of the game. Flags down on the extra point try. Flag down. <laughs> Player of the game, Phoebus. Hmm. That's a tough one. <laughs> You think so, huh? Ah, I don't think so. Got a penalty on the extra point try. Uh, think about who you want for the for the Warriors. Warriors yeah, yeah. Oh. you got some good. good I, I got mine picked. You got him good. Yeah, Lewis. Uh, no, <laughs> no, 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 you got for to the, do the Warriors, Warriors Timmy. Oh. <clears throat> sure, show us that one again. He almost got him. The number. Seven. That is Corey Thomas. And a dive into the end zone by Mr. Lewis, not to be denied. Okay, the penalty now is marked off against the Warrior, uh, the, the Phantom, brother. So they'll try an extra point try, a 25-yard extra point try. And Schwartz's kick is more than long enough, and it is right through the uprights. <laughs> so. 6.52 remains in the ballgame. We want to thank our corporate sponsors, uh, Parkland Wood Funeral Home, where 
Nancy Staten is the manager. They're located in Hampton Center Parkway and North Armstead Avenue. Phone number there is 827-4670. And I play golf with her husband, Ronnie Staten. BR Staten, as he says. And I'm not going to tell you what the B stands for. But uh, we do appreciate our corporate sponsor, with them and Zoom with 14 convenient peninsula locations. At least 14. At least. They may have added some more. Do you still have your stool up there and the one up there by where you live? When you walk in, they got a stool for you to sit down and no, you stuff. No, they I, moved the stool? I, I moved the stool. <laughs> Gee, man. I've, I've had to uh, back away from the bar, <laughs> if you will. <laughs> you and Norm, huh? Me and Norm. <laughs> yep. I know they looked, they used to, I, they told me that when you'd walk in, the, the people just light up like Christmas because they know this guy's coming, he's going to buy some stuff. They have profit sharing. Of course, they <laughs> light, their eyes light up. So look at here, here comes the bonus. All right, this one is going to be. Oh, you don't let it bounce. <clears throat> you don't want to let it bounce. Shepard, and Shepard is hammered at the 12, 13 yard line. So that's where the Warriors will take it. <laughs> That's it, a box and one to go. I, I'm going to have to stop by there tonight because I skipped dinner to get over here for this early start. So I just may just have to. Uh, you want me to call them and tell them to fry a couple more chickens? I, I've, got them on, I, I've got them on my. I got, oh, I got, Mike I got, is buying you dinner tonight? All right. All right. Now I've got zooms on my rapid dial. I just hit one. <laughs> Say my uh, phone just out of my <laughs> cell phone just goes up. Mike wants to know what we're talking about buying you dinner. <clears throat> he hadn't brought the donuts yet. <laughs> <laughs> Direct snap to Thomas. Uh, excuse me, uh, Shepard, rather. And he is out close to the 20-yard line. So that's a nice gain of about six, almost seven yards. What are you looking for? Uh, just something right on here. You want to use this? <laughs> I just need a piece of paper. What, what is that, a door? <laughs> That's good. Paper. <laughs> Excuse me. You're welcome. Second down and about uh, three and a half, almost four. Clock moving with 541 remaining in the ballgame. Mercifully. The pitch. And number 22. That's our, that's our man, Elvin George, I was talking about earlier. He just almost he's, got to the corner. He's the sophomore, and they've got some freshmen they've run back there. And okay, I'm a bit impressed with uh, the uh, the Wampler kid has played well on defense, as has, has the uh, uh, Derek Mayo. Now we've got another official stoppage of play. I think we have an equipment issue. And we'll rewind the clock. There you see it, under five minutes to go. George, by the way, Elvin just six carries for 44 yards for the Warriors. And into the open, Keith McBride. Will the Warriors break the shutout? It appears they will. 37 yards. So, 37. Me, 37. 50 and uh, carrier 220. They were, How many? They were at the, what's that? They were at the 23. Yard line. No, they were at the 23. Okay, 23. Okay, that's what? That's 27 plus 50. <laughs> 77 yards. <laughs> McBride just made our choice of player of the game easier. Yes, he did. And I was leaning towards him anyway, quite frankly, because I thought he'd done a good job. Number five, running the attack. right? Number three, but you're close. Oh, is it not? oh, that's McMillan. Okay. It was close. He had that eye surgery, right? Who did? He did. Yeah, I did. Yeah, it didn't work. Huh? Yeah, it works great. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, six carries for 97 yards for Mr. McBride. So I think uh, I, I was leaning towards him because I thought he's done a good job against this tough Phoebus defense. And that's who we'll go with. 
So our mystery player of the game for Phoebus. Mystery? Mystery. How many t touchdowns? Seven. How many yards? 300 and some. And his number is 38, and his name is? Six touchdowns. Elon I said Lewis. Seven. Elon Lewis, six touchdowns. And a player of the game for kicker town, number three, Keith McBride. Keith McBride. Congratulations. <laughs> Four thirty-five remaining in the ball game, but you know that irritated the Phantoms. Oh yeah, they want to. You want to shut out. You want your your defense goes out there with the idea. Our goal is to allow no points. The offenses go out there with the goal that we want to maintain control of the ball and we want to score. We don't want to turnovers. You know they got their goal set up. Uh, and here you are, you're playing well, you're keeping Kikatan back at their own end zone all night long, and then all of a sudden, boom, Keith McBride says, that's enough of that. We're going 70, how many yards, 30, 77? 72 or 77, I'm not sure which. Ah, well, we'll give him the split the difference. <laughs> <laughs> We're working on it. 75. 75, <laughs> that's right. They kick this one away from Lewis in and out of the end zone. So the Warriors will uh, not have to worry about Mr. Lewis returning one for a touchdown. And he is out on that particular squad. So the Phantoms will start from their 20 with 435 remaining. And Lewis is coming out of the ball game. And I think number 27, Dennis Mathis, is now the, he's a sophomore. And he's the tailback. What number do you have him as? I got him as 27. Dennis Mathis, sophomore, 5'8", 155, and a penalty flag, and they win an award for the highest I toss of say, a penalty boy, flag. Could he get that any higher? Reminded me of horseshoes. Hang time, you know, hang time. I, I think, think the Phantoms might have had too many people. Yeah. They got 12 kids out there. Yeah. So that's, again, that happens, A, early in the season, and two, it happens when you're winning by 42 to nothing or 42 to six. And Bill D will let that young man know that it could have been a crucial moment yeah. in the game. And you got to be thinking and counting noses and all that good stuff. So now they've got the number of players counted and accounted for. And well, I'll tell you, I'm glad to see that rain did not come back. That was I am too. That was good news. Boy, did that hole stop quick! Whoa! And, and in that hole, stuffing 87. that was 87. Adam Pittman. Wow. He's just a sophomore. Yeah. He's just a sophomore. Six Boom. foot one and 78. Pancake time. <laughs> I mean, that that was an opening, but. It, the ball carrier took one step and it went just like that. Boom. So a loss on that play of about six. Five and a half, six. And a handoff. No, it couldn't have been that much, Tim. It was first and 15 because of the penalty. So he, was, they were, he only lost a yard on that play. Because they had 12 men on the oh, field. That's right. That's right. So there was. That's right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Well, I, I knew it closed quick, but I didn't think it closed back. <laughs> You're right. Mark that down. You were right. First time. You admitted it too. <laughs> Oh, you're right. A lot of the time. Oh, okay. So, would you mind calling Ruth and let her know that? <laughs> we can't. We can't do that. Oh, you can't do no, that. We can't do that now. Because we, we have that mystique we have to maintain. And again, some, some tough defense in there by the Warriors. Will bring up a fourth down and long and 79 and 87. They'll be picking up number 34, B.J. Brown, as he got slammed down. Calvin Ruffin, first man to hit him. Boom. So that brings on the kicking team. Clock continues to move as we approach the two-minute mark here in the ballgame. And now we 
got a timeout being called by the Warriors. Tommy Austin over there pleading with his players. Guys, let's get the right number of guys out here. We and the right team. This yeah. is the receiving team. The punt receiving team. The growing pains of the early season. Players of the game are Elan Lewis with better than 300 yards rushing and six touchdowns. And Kevin McBride. Did I make his name different? It's Keith McBride. It's Keith me. McBride, yeah. And that is our Tidewater Team Sports Players of the Game. So now they will kick it away as... Um, the right teams are out there and the timeouts are through. The Warriors have used up all their timeouts, so we won't have to worry about any more from them. And the Phantoms have one timeout remaining. The Warriors are coming. And it's a good looking kick. Takes a nice Phoebus roll down to the 42 yard line. So that's where the Warriors will get it. With one second, less than two minutes remaining in the ballgame. Had to do that for you, Bob. I, I was waiting for the one <laughs> click left. I'll take one second. That's all right. I'll do that. Or my new, my new count is 119 <laughs> seconds remaining in the ballgame. Oh, who gave you that information? I heard someone else say it. Oh, okay. I have to do my math on that. That's not as easy. So the Warriors, uh, with the clock moving, taking... Or I should say, in no hurry to get, get up to the line. They are saying, you know what? Let's regroup and come back next week. Inside well, handoff. Inside of handoff is That's great. It's like a, a counter a counter play. Elvin George again. The young man has got some nice yardage. He was the alternate choice for player of the game for me. No. Oh. Mark it at the 49 yard line, gain of seven. This is number 25, Shepard, Isaiah Shepard, who's done a nice job tonight, and he's just a freshman, as you said, Bob. And that Mathis, uh, Dennis Mathis, number 27 for the Phantoms. Uh, he's just a sophomore, 5'8", 155. And he's the one that broke that run up and, and made the uh, runner cut inside where he was tackled. Good job defensively. McBride trying to make it two for the night. Gets the call, gets the first down, which will stop the clock with eight seconds remaining. But I would imagine that the Warriors will not rush to the line to get another playoff. They do stop the clock long enough to move the chains, as most of you know. But that will be the last play of the ball game as the clock is moving. And we're down to one second and no time. And that's it. So we remind you that next Friday night we'll be back here when these Kickatan Warriors will try to rebound from this loss as they'll host Heritage here at Darling Stadium. John Quillen back coaching the Heritage. Yes, he is. So the players of the game again, Elan Lewis. Six touchdowns, 300 plus yards for the Phantoms. And Keith McBride with the player of the game award from the Kikatan Warriors. Did a nice job of running his team's attack tonight and capped that off with a long touchdown run to break the shutout down for the Warriors. Tonight's game was brought
Brought to you by Zooms with 14 convenient locations to serve you. And in part by Parklawn Wood Funeral Home, where Nancy Staten is the manager. Well, that's going to do it for us here at Darling Stadium. For Bob Hintz, Bob Killen, Mike Hauser, and the entire Channel 46 crew, this is Tim Cole. Thanks for watching. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody.